Welcome to the Lighthouse Financial Advisors Money Over 50 podcast with Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Lighthouse Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50. Today's question is, what scares you about retirement? Dallas, um, this is your topic. It is. It is. The, uh, this is an interesting one that uh, we see this all the time with our clients. And then, and then recently, obviously, we had a couple of weeks off over Christmas and New Year's. And um, I had an experience that gave me a bit of an insight into what that might feel like. <laughs> and so the... We finished work on the 19th and I sort of hadn't really thought about it because we'd been really busy meeting with all of our clients for our end of calendar year reviews. So 19th of December, we finished work and I went home and I hadn't really thought about the fact that I was going to have two weeks off. Because normally if you've got two weeks off, you're, you've got a trip planned somewhere and so you're madly working and packing, getting organised. But mm. this was the first time that I kind of had two weeks off and uh, didn't really have any plans for that. And I was amazed at how uneasy I was about the whole concept. Mm. I, I kind of I went home and I, for, the, for about an hour that I, I sort of walked around the house and looked in the fridge and then I, I looked at my phone. I, I, it, was, it was a strange thing to, it, and that was a small taste of where I went, I've got two weeks and I don't really have many plans in the next two weeks. What am I going to do with my time? Even though I hadn't, I hadn't even had the time off yet, I was already worried about how I was going to, how I was going to cope. Yeah, that's funny. Um, you, you, you had that feeling on the way in. Yeah. So I have that yeah. feeling on the way out sometimes of the, of the break yeah. because you take two weeks off and at yeah. the end of it, yeah, you're a bit bored. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm champing at the bit to get back to work yeah. and and um, become productive again. Yeah. yeah, It's probably a productivity thing, I think. Because yeah. Yeah, you if want I'm, to especially be if I'm at home and it's Christmas time, yeah. I feel like a slob. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I've let go of yeah. my... Uh, yeah. yeah, people are offering, shoving food in front yeah. of your face all the yeah. time and yeah. yeah. Drinking too much and eating too much, and, yeah. and and you feel that real need to go back and become yeah. productive again. But you had that feeling on the way in, yeah, uh, and, to, and your, I think, to your break, and that was what made me think of this as as a topic for uh, a lot of people, and something that we see fairly consistently. Consistently is that a lot of people are are scared about retirement, about what is their life actually going to look like, what are they going to fill their time with. As you say, that, that's going into a two-week holiday. You can imagine that like most of the people that we're talking to, if you're retiring at 60 or 65, you've been in the workforce for 40, mm. you know, 50 years in some cases. Yeah. A huge part of uh, a lot of people, a huge part of their identity has, has been that they've been, uh, you know, uh, they've been working, they've been a, mm. you know, a productive member of society from that perspective. They've raised families, they've, had, they've been busy doing all these things. And now they're kind of going, okay, well, I'm... I'm, I'm sort of keen to cut back and, and take it a bit easy, but there's this sort of blank spot just yawning out in front of them going, well, what am I going to, who am I if I'm not? It's, so it's a big part of not only how do I fill my time, but it's a big part of our identity is what we do day to day work on. Would it be fair to say for most people that this is a subconscious fear as well? Yes. Like they haven't yeah. even considered yeah. it. I mean, like most, I, most like, people don't really come in and say and it normally takes a few years leading up to retirement mm. people that we work with on an ongoing basis you see it they, they don't normally come in and say I'm worried about what I'm going to fill my days with when I'm retired no they they sort of like you said it's more of a subconscious thing where we see it all the time where someone will say I'd like to retire at 60 and as they get closer mm. to 60 they're kind of going they're not really enjoying their work that much but they don't really know what else they want to do yes and so yeah, we talk about this where for someone who is really enjoying their work and they just want to work forever, that's, that's great, that's fine. But I, I guess I see a lot of it where people that aren't really enjoying their work and, but the fear of the unknown is, is a, it's, a, it's a new phase of your life. It's a very scary thing. And for most people, you've been doing a similar sort of thing for 40 years. You know, it's a bit like if you, yeah, you, you finished high school and you started workforce. Your first day going to your first job is probably a, a scary sort of a thing. Yes, it's like that, but but as you said, on the other end. Of the, of yeah, the that's right. Yeah, uh, 
times. So the so the um, the things that you want to discuss today. Yeah. Um, so I guess the first one is that the this is a common thing, and and it's something that I've had these discussions with uh, clients of ours um, throughout the years where. I think that it's a bit of a relief for people to know that they're not crazy for mm. worrying about these things. And it, it's a, it's sort of a thing where it's a bit like winning the lotto, where the people that go, okay, well, we're in a financial position that we can retire at you know, 60 or whenever that, that time is. If they said to their mates who, who have to go to work because they financially can't afford, I'm, I'm worried about retirement, they may want to slap them because you go, you, you've kind of, you've done all the work to get in this position. You've done the hard yards. And now you're worried about it. Yeah, it, I, it, I can understand that. It's a, it's a, it's a problem. So, um, again, would it be fair to say in third world countries they don't have this worry? Exactly right. Because yep. they're worried yep. about, yep. you know, putting food on the table yep. every single day. That's right. And you're not, you're never worried about. Yep. Well, it's, what if I'm financially? It, it's like the millennial thing. Able to be able to retire <laughs> yeah. and, never, and never work again. It, it's like you know the, we joke about uh, the whole generation. As millennials, we worry about, mm, is this the job that I'm really passionate about? Yeah. And, and baby boomers, says, what are you talking about, mate? <laughs> if you've got a job, just shut That's up and right. go to work. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing where for most people that are in a, that, are, that have done the hard yards, put themselves in a good position to retire, they, they sort of feel a bit, I think most people tend to feel a bit alone in that, in that fear or in that concern about what they're going to do in retirement. Mm. So that's, I guess, the first point I'd make is that if that's something that you that you are worried about or that you are sort of scared about, it's it's completely normal and it's a, it's a very common thing that we see all the time. And like I say, it's not just for retire. Like I've, as I was saying, on a on a smaller basis, I experienced that in the last few months. So I can imagine that if someone had said to me on that nineteenth of December, "Hey, you're finishing up work today and you're not going back ever again," yes, I, I would have been I would have been really struggling with it. Yeah, so it's it's. Uh, it is common to be worried. Yeah. Um, uh, as you said, certainly it, it's not something. Look, even I think even people that don't show that worry, yeah, are, are deep down yeah. part of them. Yeah, uh, is concerned. Yeah, and uh, and and they are worried. Yeah, uh, about that, and because a lot of it is yeah subconscious. Yeah, um, it, it's very hard when it's subconscious, isn't it? Because you you think, yeah. um, why am I feeling? Yeah. Why am I feeling uneasy? And yeah. you, you can't put your finger on that. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's common to be worried. Yeah. Uh, the second point yeah. is that it sort of makes sense to be worried because retirement is a big adjustment. And mm. that's that's something that, I guess, if you look at leading up to retirement, our, our whole business and our whole focus is geared around getting yourself financially prepared to retire. And mm. so the, the financial side, we, we are talking about with people all the time, we're thinking about all the time. But... And I think a lot of people, when they, even when they're talking to their friends and family about retirement and planning for retirement, it's really just about the financial side. But retirement is a big adjustment from an emotional perspective and, mm. and psychologically to, to have to make that switch from there's a big part of your identity and a big part of your day-to-day -day life that's just kind of uh, taken up and you don't have to think about what you're going to do. Mm. And so that's, that's I guess, a, a part of what... Uh, the, the point I'd make there is that it's a big, it's a huge adjustment and it's it's enough of, a, of an adjustment that you, you have to worry about how you're going to fill that time without the separate issue which we'll talk about is the financial stress of that and how mm -hmm. to fund that lifestyle but just even sitting down and, and working out what are the things that you can do leading up to retirement to uh, I guess get yourself comfortable with the idea of how you're going to fill your time and, and what, your, what your main focuses are going to be in retirement. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, uh, I mean, you've, you've got uh, clients also that are getting into retirement now. And, and I've seen that, you know, for a lot of people, they everyone wants to do different things in retirement. Some people want to travel. Some people just want to hang out at home. But I tend to find that the people who have, uh, that, have that enjoy their retirement have kind of um, spent a bit of time really thinking about what they want their, what they want their life to look like. And so... Yeah, you know, I always joke, but when someone says to me, when I retire, I'm going to go fishing. You know, well, all right, you, you might do that for a week and then you'll be sunburnt and hungover and yeah. sick of it. What are you going to do for the, for the rest of your life? Yeah. Similarly to you, you've been looking forward to two weeks off. Yeah. A week and a half of Christmas and then you, and then you yeah. um, 
hadn't really thought about what you were going to do because we were mm. obviously going through a busy pa- period yeah. uh, seeing yeah. our clients at the end of the year yeah. as well. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. it's it rolls around and, yeah. and the first hour, yeah. you're uh, <laughs> Exactly. Did you walk around turning off um, turning the light, light switches? <laughs> no. Like, it's a real no. father thing to no, do. No, well, I was about to say, when, when, when we first had Winston 10 months ago, that was I started I started to do that then because that's what you do. Yeah. When you <laughs> No, I watched a uh, I watched this television show one time. Yeah, and this is how this guy knew his wife was pregnant because he started turning, he started off. To turning <laughs> off. He started doing what fathers do, which yeah. is um, turning well, off uh, light switches in, yeah. in every room. Yeah, I just started making really and... poor jokes, making <laughs> making use of dad jokes. <laughs> no, I I think that that's kind of the the second point that I make there is that, and, and we've seen this a lot, is that the it's it is a big adjustment, and it, it's something that um, you yeah, know retirement. Is, is can be a scary thing and it's a common thing to be worried about but but it, it is something that bears some thinking about the actual mm. i guess the life planning side of it, the emotional planning of how are you going to fill your days how are you going to get a, a sense of achievement or uh, fulfillment out of your out of your day-to-day life so yep. that's a big part of it so people is it, it's worth and you might not have all the answers but it's important to know that that is a, a question that, that you are going to you are going to think about you might not know what that's going to look like and you might have to think about it in retirement but we know for a fact that, that that is going to be a big part of your, whether you enjoy retirement or not, is going to be, uh, do you have a sense of purpose? Do you have a meaning? A sense of meaning, do you, do you have a reason to get out of bed in the morning? And most people uh, need something. Yeah, and, I, and, and certainly um, I can imagine the, the worry would be double, if not triple, um, uh, if you didn't have the financial resources to be able to retire. Yep. And um, a client of mine once said, we were talking about money in his retirement, yeah. and we were talking about, you know, you could do this, you could do that, are you interested yeah. in this? And and he actually made the comment, he said, money's just energy, isn't it? Yeah. I said, that's a great analogy. So yeah. it's, it's energy, and we can concentrate that energy here, yeah. over here or yeah. over there. Or, yeah. um, and I, I, I thought, Gee, that's um. Yeah, I like the way he's actually put that. Yeah. So yeah. So and that and that ties into the I guess the last point of the way that we think about that is that when you look at your your financial planning when it comes to retirement, you really want to work backwards. So what you what we don't want to do is go, how much money have you got? Uh, we don't want to get to that point and go, right, this is the this is the amount of money that you've got. Now you've got to adjust your life based on that amount of money. You really want to work the other way and go what do I want to be spending my energy and what do I want to be spending my time on when I'm retired? What do I want my life to look like? And then how do I take care of the financial side of that? So you basically, I guess you plan for your life first and then you plan for how am I going to fund that life rather than the other way around. You know, we really don't want to get there and go, this is the money you've got. This is how much income you've got every year. Now you've got to try and make that work. Yeah, so start thinking about that yeah. as you approach retirement. Yeah, start... Um, start uh, so. So do you have any ideas of what people should do? Just consider that, talk about it? Um, well, I always I, I, think, it. I think about the, we, and we've talked about this at length in, in other podcasts about how much income people spend in retirement, is that my, my rule of thumb is when we're talking about the financial side, and we see this all the time, people go, well, we're, we're currently, we're both working at the moment, whereas you know, we're, our net income is $110,000 a year and 20000 goes towards the mortgage, which we're going to pay off when we retire. So they're currently spending ninety thousand dollars a year, and people that go, well, when we ret- I read a newspaper article the other day that says a comfortable retirement looks like it costs fifty six thousand seven hundred and forty two dollars a year. Hmm. To me, that's craziness because you've obviously you've obviously crafted your day to day life now based on how you want to live, yes. and 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 that's kind of how we how we think is that if you're whatever you're currently spending now, whatever you're currently doing and filling your time with. Some of those things are going to change, but most of them are going to stay the same. That's right, and 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 to be, I've, I've read that report, yeah, which um, explains the fifty six thousand dollars, and it's, I just I just describe it as absolute rubbish. Yeah. Like I've, I've looked at <laughs> what bizarre. they they allocate eleven hundred dollars a year for rates. Yeah, <laughs> they allocate about the same for home insurance. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The figures are just complete. I, I just yeah. don't know what no. world. That, that report and, um, has come out of like it, and, and it's, it's a well-known report. Yeah, it's it's and that's I guess the, the like we're saying you really want to craft your life first and then back the other way. So yeah. uh, to use the example of overseas travel, like most of our clients really like to travel, and 
and they've done some travel and, and leading up to retirement in those early years, most of them want to do more rather than less. Mm. So if you've been spending $20,000 a year on overseas travel, mm. and then when you retire, you go, oh, well, I guess I've got $57,000 a year to spend, so I can't do that. To me, that's craziness. You, yes. you really go, what do I want to do? How do I want to fill my time? And then work backwards to go, what do I need to do to fund the financial aspect of that? So like we are saying, it's a big adjustment to make. It's a lot of trying to sort of guess what you think your life might look like in retirement. But there's no point There's no point arriving at the dollar figure first and then trying to force your lifestyle mm. into that. You really want to find, think about what you want your lifestyle to be and then, and then try and make the numbers work from there. And then I guess it becomes a bit of a cycle where that's a part of our role when we're talking to our clients about that is to go, if, if, you, if you're currently spending $80,000 a year and you want to do this, you want to spend about the same amount in retirement, you want to live the same lifestyle, are you on track to be able to do that or are you not? And if you're not able to do that, then, then you can look at going back and shaving things and going, how would I change my life in retirement to be able to fund that? But, but you really need, you know, it's, it's a bit like any equation. I'll go on a bit of a tangent here. <laughs> is that you need, there's two variables there, which is what can you afford and what do you want? Yeah. And you really need to know, or at least have an idea of what they both are. Otherwise, you're just flying completely blind. You, you can't actually do any sort of, any, any planning, any calculations. So it's kind of one where, and they, they tie to each other, is first think about what you actually want. Then we, then that's our job, is to sit down and crunch the numbers and go, well, you can afford that or you can't afford that, or potentially you could afford a variation of that. And then that all just cycles back through and go, okay, well, would I be happy with that? Am I, can I, can I adjust my lifestyle based on the amount that I can afford? Mm. And if so, that's great. If not, how do we go back to the drawing board and change the amount that we're going to have in retirement savings? Mm. Yeah. No, certainly, that, that's one of the, the parts that I certainly enjoy early in the process when we meet yeah. with people is, you know, asking them what what they yeah. see their retirement as and, yeah. and, and, you know, that all has a dollar value to it. Yeah. So you're doing yeah. a budget with them as if they are retired yeah. now and, and, and you can say, yeah, well, you'll we'll yeah. pay the mortgage out by that stage, yeah. for example, and mm-hmm. and we can shave money there. Um, uh, it, it, we get to a realistic dollar figure of what yeah. they're going to need to yeah. draw in the first year of their retirement. Yeah. We apply the yeah. inflation yeah. to that. And then we can start to work out what dollar value their retirement savings needs to be That's right. uh, the day they enter retirement. Now, yeah. now, like, like you said, it's, it's about trading off. So if yeah. if, if, if that's going to require too much of their income now yep. to put away, yep. um, then we can start to shave. You yes. know what they. You know, so so rather than an overseas holiday, for example, every year yeah, like in their retirement, year, like right. every second year, yep. every third year. Yep. Um, yeah, um, we we. We talk about this all the time, like yeah. like um, when you're sitting on the beach on yeah. Magnetic Island. Yeah, you're not thinking. Uh, which is which is for those of you listening outside of Townsville, it's only uh, a twenty minute boat ride away. Boat ride. <laughs> yeah. You're not sitting there thinking, "Geez, I wish I was uh, in Europe now, yeah. uh, drinking yeah. Chardonnay or you're, you're rosé." You're, you're, you're just enjoying where you are. Yeah, you're, you're actually enjoying where you are. So, I mean, there's yeah. plenty of trade-offs that you can make. Yeah, um, and that, that's a good point, because uh, like, this is something that happens very early on. The piece for us, it, it's a key part of our initial discussion is, is to is to have these conversations and and sometimes to push back uh, with people on, you know, like you're saying, if if we in those a big part of our first meeting is trying to get a bit of an understanding of what people, uh, what's most important to people. And so, as someone who's, as we said, if someone who really loves to travel overseas and they like to go out to dinner a couple of nights a week or they you know, really like to do things that cost a bit of money, if they're then sitting there saying to us, I'm going to spend $60,000 a year when I retire, <laughs> it's our job then to push back on that a bit and to say, well, h- how is your life going to change to, to yeah. fit in under that cap? And that's, like you say, it's not as, like a lot of things that are that are a bit scary, it's normally the unknown, I think, that mm. is the, the big thing, the big concern for most people is that we're kind of flying, flying by, leading up to retirement going, I think I, think I need about $60,000 a year and I think maybe I might have enough money to, to fund that yeah. and then I think maybe I'll be able to fit my lifestyle in under that $60,000 yeah. a year. Whereas, our approach is to throw that out and go, okay, let's let's look at it as, what do I really want my life to look like? How much is it going to cost me to fund that? Mm. How much do I need in retirement savings? 
and what do I have to do between now and then to make that happen? Mm -hmm. And is that is that feasible? And yeah. that's all something that, you know, obviously in very rough terms, we can work that out in the first hour of speaking to someone. Yes, that's and, right. And what we've, what, as I guess, like we're saying there, the unknown is scarier than, than anything else. It, most of the time, people that come in and see us, they have a realistic view of, of what, they, what they are on, where they're on track to be. Hmm. And if they're not, if they go, well, I'm, I'm, I think maybe I'm on track to be here and we, can, and we tell them, well, you, you're actually not, you need to do these things to be in that position. Most people leave that appointment feeling a lot better about it. Whether it's good news or bad news, they yeah. at least know. And that's right. It's, it's, it's like a medical test where when you're waiting for the results, that's kind of the, the most uncomfortable time. I Whereas agree. Once um, you know what the result is, yeah. you can then deal with that. That's forward. right. So, um, so the three, in wrapping up, yeah. So quickly go through the three points again. The, I guess to wrap up, what I'd say there is, it's a common thing to worry about. The, you know, what scares you about retirement? For most people, there's something that, that they, they're worried about with regards to their retirement. So you're, you're not crazy. It's a very common thing to, to be worried about or to be scared about. Um, secondly, you know, retirement is a big adjustment, and so it, it bears some thinking about uh, leading up to then as to, okay, how do I, what do I actually want my life to look like? So, you know, you don't need to necessarily plan it out in the day to day, but you do have to have a bit of an idea of how am I going to get my sense of meaning, sense of purpose out mm. of my, my life in retirement? Um, and then the third thing is, you know, taking care of the, the financial side of that. So. If, you, if you've worked through those things and gone, okay, well, I'm a bit worried about my retirement. What do I actually want that to look like? Now, can I, am I on track to be able to fund that retirement? And, and if not, what steps do I need to be able to take to be able to do that? Or how do I need to adjust what my, what my target is and what my life's gonna look like? Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Lighthouse Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.